Da, hvala. Ovaj, sad, um, u ovoj smiješnoj situaciji u kojoj ovoga, Hrvati i Slovenci razgovaraju engleski, I will now uh, 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 switch to English. Um, the key words here are where, now, time and remains. And this is an analysis or an attempt at an analysis uh, of the song uh, that Bowie uh, released in 2013, Where Are We Now? Um, which I think epitomizes some of the um, crucial aspects of his work. And this analysis will engage um, the theoretical perspectives of Agamben, um, this, the time that remains is Agamben's um, term, Il Tempo Che Resta, in a book published in 2000. Um, also, uh, the notion of presentism, presentism uh, developed by François Artaud in his uh, work Presentisme Sample au Par Défaut, uh, in 2003, uh, with respect to the importance of a, um, the relationship between past, present, and the future, uh, and in particular Bernard Stiegler's um, notion of symbolic misery, misère symbolique, and uh, decadence and disbelief, uh, as as developed in a series of works. Um, Time permitting, I will also say something about Jacques Attali um, and his notion, two um, of his notions of repetition and composition, uh, and how they sh might be employed in um, analyzing Bowie. Um, even as they turn time into space, um, Archiving and prospecting obviously entail making time. Making time is the key notion here, as we will um, see, I hope. The very time it takes for these operations to take place, what Giorgio Agamben, following Gustave Guillaume, calls operational time, is seldom taken into account. It is precisely, precisely the impassive time, absent from the schematic representation of the temporal sequence, that it brings about, that all transformations of the synchronic into the diachronic is predicated upon. Since it entails the perspective of the time it takes time to come to an end, or as Bowie puts it in, um, in an early song, time takes time to pass, its purview is of necessity modern rather than contemporary. As an instance of the industrial temporalization of consciousness, this is a term by Stigler, popular music, exposing as it does that time is never more of the essence than in the temporary or ephemeral, presents a perhaps surprisingly complex <coughs> refraction of this problematic, most singularly in the work of David Bowie. The notion of time under its assorted aspects and, it, and its multifarious manifestations can be said to be a crucial focus of Bowie's work, both as regards the subjects addressed and the means employed in attending to them. Attuned as he is to the time-related conditions upon <coughs> under which he operates, Bowie is keenly responsive to the fact that whatever else it is he might be doing as a performer, as a musician, <coughs> and above all as a rock and roll star, he deals in time. As the following paragraph from James Perrone's comprehensive survey of Bowie's a career succinctly demonstrates, this awareness takes on a multiple forms simultaneously. This is a quote from Perron. Bowie's fascination with old music hall music comes to the fore in the song Time. Buoyed by the virtuosic piano playing of Mike Garson and the powerful guitar work of Mick Ronson, Bowie r rails against the onward march of time. From the standpoint of its music, it is also one of the most conventional pop-style songs on Aladdin Sane, the album on which it was released. On, the, on <clears throat> this song, Bowie uses his best musical theater Anthony Newley style voice. And the song itself is backwards looking musically, resembling both the music of the British Music Hall and the 1950s uh, uh, doo-wop as another song on that album, The Prettiest Star, does. Even a cursory glance at Bowie's lyric 
lyrics reveals, moreover, that the issue of time is consistently approached from what can, given the context of pop music, only be a most peculiar angle. The customary celebration of the instant from which pop gets its name, after all, not from popular as is commonly assumed, but from pop as in popcorn, uh, recurrently cedes its privileged position to sundry informations of mortality. In the song discussed by Perón, Time, the anthropomorphic subject is to be figured as something of a con artist, yet also as an omnipotent figure. Time, his waiting in the wings. His script is you and me, boys. His trick is you and me. I look at my watch, it says 925, and I think, oh God, I'm still alive. You are not evicting time. The inevitable passing of time is precisely the reason why heroes can only appear in scare quotes. We can be heroes just for one day. Most peculiarly, in one of his signature tunes, Bowie all but diffidently debunks the tenet pop culture is smugly predicated upon everlasting youth. Look out, you rock and rollers, pretty soon now you're going to get older. This was already in 1971. Bowie was 24. Um, <clears throat> the perspective receives a special emphasis in Bowie's famous ersatz rock and roller Ziggy Stardust. Time takes a cigarette, puts it in your mouth. This is the beginning of Rock and Roll Suicide, the closing track on the album. Given that Ziggy is a messianic figure, it seems apposite to recall Agamben's contention that to conceive of messianic time as being exclusively oriented towards the future is erroneous. In point of, in point of fact, messianic time is Honin Kairos, the time of the now, the time of the end, rather than the end of time. It is the time that remains between the two times, between time and its end. Um, this is exactly what happens in the opening track of the album Ziggy Stardust, Five Years. In other words, it is a responsiveness of time that is modern, the word deriving from modo, Latin for right now, and also conscious of the fact that eventually it will end. Agamben follows Guillaume in calling this time, it takes time to come to an end, operational time. Given that only the experience of time, but not its representation, is available to us, since, as Bowie puts it in changes, time may change me, but I can't trace time. Uh, incidentally, in this line, we can uh, observe a peculiar device that Bowie is particularly fond of using. I can trace time. It is impossible to say in delivery whether he's saying can't trace or can trace because of the elision. And um, so uh, it can be an affirmation or a negation. You cannot, uh, you cannot tell by listening. Um, and this is not, an, not, not incidental, of course. We habitually have recourse to the constructions of spatial order. But this precisely, as Agamben puts it, does not show time in the act of being constructed in thought. The time it takes co to construe time. The time the mind takes to realize a time image. It does not present the work of time in its respective stages in posse, state of poten potentiality, in fieri, the process of formation, and in esse, the state of having been constructed. Now this, um, Agamben, following Benveniste and Foucault, uh, is crucially uh, links cruci uh, with the formation of the, and the fa very foundation of subjectivity. This lapse uh, of time is the part of the structure of the subject. Um, now, the crucial um, point in Agamben's book, Il Tempo Che Resta, for this uh, particular purpose is he, the structure analogy that he observes between operational time and the structure of a poem, uh, and what he calls lyric time. Temporal structure of lyric poetry in general, especially in fixed forms, um, is, is, it comes to the fore because uh, reading a poem, we know, we see that it will end we can see uh, the end coming. Hmm? It will end after a certain number of lines, even if it may be prolonged by a coda, and the coda has a special function in where are we now. A poem is a temporal machine 
from the very st uh, which from the very start strains towards its end. Hmm? There is the unmistakable temporality in in the um, in a lyrical poem. Every poem, says Agamben, is a soteriological device that transforms chronological time into messianic time because of this awareness of the um, end which comes. The time the poem takes to come to an end. This is lyric time. Um, now, uh, this should be set against, I think, uh, what François Artaud in his um, in his book I mentioned, calls presentism, and he sees presentism as a peculiar characteristic of uh, the 20th century, which in retrospect combined futurism and presentism. It started out more futurist than presentist and ended up more presentist than futurist, because um, the present began replacing the future and encroaching further and further until in recent years, it has seemed to take over entirely. The viewpoint of the present, the perspective of presentism, has established its dominion. Uh, this is um, closely related to what Stigler calls the synchronization machine, which, um, using the, um, the faculty of adopting the time of temporal objects, such as recorded songs, for example, um, instills same secondary retentions in the audience, thereby uh, annulling um, diachrony that he sees uh, cru as crucial to the formation of the subject. I will come back to this. Um, now, uh, the interesting thing about Artog's book is that he explains why and where are we now Bowie uses Berlin uh, as, a, as a, point of, uh, a point of orientation. Um, um, uh, before that, uh, one thing that needs to be pointed out uh, uh, is that um, uh, both Artog and Stigler uh, link this to the uh, problematics of political economy, specifically capitalist production. Um, now, uh, what is peculiar about, um, about this um, form, the contemporary modes of consumption, says Artog, is the value placed on the ephemeral. Uh, they scramble, the audience, scramble for the live sound by produce, consume, and recycle an increasing number of images and words in an ever shorter time. Time is reduced and compressed. This is what presentism means. Uh, but this coincides with mass unemployment <coughs> in European societies. Unemployment is the key factor, Artog writes, and this imprisonment within the present and within a presentism experienced henceforth as oppressive and without hope. This is what Stigler calls, for his part, symbolic misery, this um, feeling of oppression and, and hope, uh, loss of hope. Uh, this privileging of the, um, of the immediate uh, is what Artog calls presentism, and both he and Stigler see this as the problem. I think that Bowie is addressing this problem in a very direct way, as I will try to show in conclusion. Now, as to Berlin, uh, Artog writes, Berlin in the 1990s, not in the late 70s when Bowie was living there, but in the 1990s, the period where that he's looking upon from the perspective of where are we now. More than any other city in Europe and perhaps in the world, put thousands of people to work, from immigrant laborers to major international architects. It was manna from heaven for town planners and journalists. And it became mandatory and fashionable reference, a good subject, a laboratory, and a space of critical reflection. All these are in scare quotes. It generated countless commentaries and many controversies. In Berlin, more than anywhere elsewhere, time was a visible and tangible problem that could not be eluded. What should our relation to the past be? Uh, how to inhabit the present in the most literal sense. What should be destroyed, preserved, reconstructed, or built, and how? This is also from, from our talk. In this sense, Berlin is an emblematic city, uh, a site of memory for the whole of Europe, caught as it is between broadly amnesia and a duty to remember. Now, the song, Where Are We Now?, is uh, which uh, names many sites in Berlin in the lyrics, uh, is in is particularly interesting from uh, the point of view of its composition. Uh, it consists of a verse-chorus, verse-chorus sequence, and then a coda or an outro, uh, the last part. Now, uh, the 
What is interesting, as Gary Ewer has shown, is that the verse gets pulled in two different harmonic directions between F and C, with a brief note toward AB major. After the first chord, F, <coughs> F major, we start to get pulled in a new direction. Uh, and the, the tune, actually, the melody, never sits comfortably in any key, and yet pulls you, uh, and never pulls you too far from the home key of F major. Uh, the, uh, the harmonic rhythm, and uh, how frequently chords change in a song, uh, is also of peculiar interest here. Uh, common to, uh, it is common for the harmonic rhythm to remain more or less the same throughout the duration of the song. But here, the verse fluctuates between eight beats, had to get the train from Potsdamer Platz, then quickens to a chord change every four beats. You never knew that, that I could do that, and so on. Um, and it remains four beats throughout the chorus. Uh, as we see in a lot of pop music, the chorus progression becomes shorter, reinforcing the key. But here, while you think that the progression should firmly plant you in F major, the chords are actually taken from C major. Uh, all of this reinforces the tonal ambiguity we see in the verse progression. Um, now, this is something that's characteristic of Bowie in general. Uh, a signature feature uh, of his work is, in fact, the um, lack of metrical balance. In um, Station to Station, for example, there is a, a riff that could be interpreted as three measures of 2-4 time, followed by a measure of 4-4 four, four time with internal syncopated accents, or as a measure of 4-4 four, four and a measure of 2-4, followed by a unit consisting of two measures of 3-8 and a measure of 2-8 time. No matter how one hears this metrical division, however, it is fundamentally and fully intentionally unbalanced, as Perón concludes. Um, now, all of this uh, should be uh, set against what Aunt Jacques Attali in his book Noise, uh, or Bruit, calls composition, uh, as opposed to repetition. Uh, composition is... Um, when a piece of music is composed uh, specifically for the purpose of being composed. Repetition is when it is being composed uh, for the purpose of communicating something. Mm -hmm. uh, the self-destruction of capitalism, according to Attali, lies in this contradiction, in the fact that music leads a deafening life. An instrument of differentiation, it has become a locus of repetition. It itself becomes undifferentiated, gets anonymous in the commodity, and hides behind the mask of stardom. It makes audible what is essentially in the contradiction of the developed society, an anxiety-ridden quest for lost difference following a logic from which difference is banished. This was written in 1977 and has obviously become even more true since. Now, to conclude and to show that Bowie is um, aware of this political dimension of this work, I would refer you to, um, to an essay uh, called Precisely Where Are We Now? and published in uh, the journal Commonweal uh, in November 1890 by William Morris. Um, and it, it's a um, state of uh, it's it's a um, review of the progress of British socialism in the late 19th century. Now, Bowie is a long-time William Morris fan, and he's, uh, there is no point in proving that, that, that he's aware of this reference. Um, it's beside the point anyway, but um, I certainly don't doubt it for the moment. But it is interesting that it has been completely uh, ignored. Uh, the song has been discussed exclusively in terms of Bowie's personal life in Berlin and even earlier you can find mm, people um, writing about the t-shirt he wears in the video which says Song of Norway and you will uh, be informed that this is a musical in which his late 60s girlfriend performed in uh, but not that Where Are We Now is a title taken from William Morris uh, now, Morris, in his 1890 piece, as I said, writes the following. It is good from time to time for those who are engaged in, se in a serious movement to look back and review the progress of the past few years. 
which involves looking around them and noting the way the movement is affecting other people. It is good to do so for this reason, amongst others, that men absorbed in such a movement are apt to surround themselves with a cart of kind of artificial atmosphere which distorts the proportion of things outside and prevents them from seeing what is really going on and consequently from taking due counsel as to what it is best to do. Um, uh, Morris specifically singles out the outcasts and the unrespectable person as to uh, as uh, the, with the artists and all sorts of oddballs and cranks as the co very small minority that are um, that are prepared to do without masters. Hmm? Uh, for those who are complete socialists, Morris writes, or let us call them communists, uh, the task is to make socialists, and this is the business at present, uh, says says Morris. Hmm? Uh, to make socialists, not, they're not to be found, they're to be, uh, they're to be made. And the, uh, the people who are specifically, um, specifically who, spe who more specified are best suited for this purpose are the unpractical half-cracked artist or author. Now, cracked artist, half-cracked artist, but uh, um, is, this is almost uh, a quote from Bowie, um, uh, 80 years later, cracked actor, uh, the 1973 tr track. Uh, now, change uh, had been wrought through them, though not by them. This is, uh, I think, crucial for uh, understanding Bowie. Uh, the change occurs through him, but not, it is not made by him. This is, it, this is the mistaken um, perspective that expects um, Bowie or any anyone of his um, engaged in, in doing what he does to uh, to effect uh, a change. It is he is more like a catalyst for the for the uh, for the change. Um, now uh, the um, uh, this obviously goes against the grain of how pop music is usually uh, interpreted, and this song uh, in particular. If you look at the video, you will see that Bowie shows images of Berlin that does not exist. Uh, he, uh, in the video, even more so than in the lyrics. Uh, in, the, in the lyrics, uh, KWD is mentioned, the, the Kaufland des Westens. Uh, but, um, um, but in the video, you see many sites from the late 70s and at any rate before the 1989 fall of the Berlin Wall. Hmm. And in that context, and with the Morris reference in mind, uh, the song becomes about uh, where are we now in terms of the uh, change of social order. Hmm. And uh, of course there is no answer. The song does not provide an answer to this. That, that's the, the point of the musical analysis. Uh, and in the coda, the, the last part, uh, what uh, there is... Um, there is no narrative progress, there is simply a repetition as long as there's you, as long as there's me, and so on. So, but this as long, which uh, is the operational time Agamben uh, discusses, uh, is not specified. It's not specified what will come at the end of this time. Uh, the, what is important is the duration of this time, the messianic, the messianic time. Now, the one aspect that also needs to be addressed is this we. Who is it? Who is this we? And this is what Stigler analyzes in a series of works that the um, what he calls the what he calls the um, uh, synchronization um, of of chronology, the abolish the abolishing of diachrony uh, makes it impossible for a we to come uh, to come into being and uh, specifically turns every singularity into a particularity. Now, if there, if there ever was a person of whom uh, this word could be used, it was Bowie, singular, I mean, and not particular. Bowie is not a particular representation of anything. He is singular. Uh, and his work is all about singular not being turned into a particular, and that, in that way, even though he works in the uh, in the under the conditions of of musical industry, uh, 
he is able to uh, subvert this. Uh, it's to, to subvert it from the point of view explained uh, by Morris uh, for the people who are willing to do without masters. For the mass of people, Morris is very specific that this is a tiny minority of people who are willing to do without masters. Um, all men must be who are not prepared to manage their own business themselves, namely slaves. Uh, the timid of all classes, all men but a very few. Now, this very few uh, is, are the, perhaps the happy few of Stendhal. Uh, Stendhal, another, uh, perhaps if there, if there ever was a role model for Bowie, it would be Stendhal, I think. Stendhal used 200 pseudonyms to sign his works. Uh, not because he, was, uh, he had no fixed identity, but precisely to escape from being fixed as an identity. And I think this is essentially what, what Bowie was, was doing. Um, and Stendhal was also just as odd uh, with his own time as Bowie was with his, even as they fully understood and engaged that time, that time that remains. Thank you.